Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Our speaker this evening is Corrine Rock. Corrine is an international speaker, lecturer, and author. She has a private practice as a clinical hypnotherapist and coach in Coquitlam. Corrine op uh, opened a vocational college teaching clinical hypnotherapy and a coach's journey coaching program. This program integrates coaching with hypnotherapy. If you have any questions of Corrine during her talk, please type them into the chat. And when there's a logical break in her, uh, in her delivery, I will uh, ask those questions of Corrine and she will answer them. Corrine, are you ready to take it away? I am ready. All right, the show is totally yours. Welcome everyone. How awesome. This is gonna be very different since it's not interactive. I'm so, it's, very, it's a very different way to do it. So my name is Corrine Rupp and I am a clinical hypnotherapist. I am also a master coach. Um, I've been coaching since 1998, um, probably earlier than that, but the actual training started in 1998. In 2007, I opened my company called Your Own Uniqueness or You Seminars and YOU stands for Your Own Uniqueness. And the whole premise behind it was to really support people to really understand that they are unique. They have power and to really empower people to whatever niche they're in, it doesn't really matter you can absolutely create the life that you want with that, within that niche, but also then you can coach others to do the same within your own niche. Like you become the expert and then I help you coach uh, people in that niche. I don't even need to know that niche with the program that we're about to show you. When we master the art of coaching, and coaching simply means to be able to support or to empower, in my view. Lots of people have lots of different views of what coaching is. And to me, it's about empowering people to live the life that they really want to live. Um, over the, this whole thing in 2020 with COVID, you know, COVID or no COVID, like my business tripled. And it's interesting why coaches, why that actually happened. Um, a lot of businesses are struggling and I want to be very respectful of that. But I also don't, I want to let people know that when, you know, we're given lemons, we make lemonade and that's what coaches actually do really, really well. And so it's about how do you take a, a situation like we've just experienced and or still experiencing and, you know, reinvent. And that's what entrepreneurs are so good at doing. We're so well versed in being able to kind of slip and slide and pivot and, and kind of move with what's happening. You know, I can remember in 1981, my dad, he had his own business. That's when interest rates were 22%. And they had to figure out what to do to, to make those mortgage payments and how to keep their businesses afloat. That's what I grew up in, in that whole kind of where things were really well and then things weren't that great. And then things went back to, you know, a really positive thing. Um, most of my career has been done in sales. So as of being an entrepreneur, coming from a family business, one of the things that my dad used to say was, if you don't have sales, then, you know, what else do you need? The business isn't going to do anything. And so it's about how do we take the coaching and the sales and all of that and kind of blend it together so that you can always do what you love. So we're going to take a look at how to add coaching to your business, how easy that's actually done. If you're being coached, that's awesome. Um, we're going to show you a different way, perhaps a, a different way of being coached in a way that empowers you that will empower your clients as well. And so why coaching will set up you or set you up for success, COVID or no COVID. You know, we did talk about my being a clinical hypnotherapist. Um, that's one of the things that we, I teach as well. 
And, you know, when you can actually be aware of what's going on for your employee, your colleague, or your um, client, it's a lot easier to help them maneuver where they need to go. So just a quick question, and then I'm not going to respond, but something for you to think about when something happens, when push comes to shove, what, at, what do you actually do? And, and just think about that for a second, because we do operate from an autopilot process, a subconscious process. When something happens, such as COVID, you saw people go right into their homes in complete fear. We had some people that went, okay, so we can't do a dine-in, so we're going to do takeout, and they went to absolute solution. We saw some people who, you know, were kind of in the middle. So we had the extreme left and right, and then we had the middle. And so all of those responses don't come from COVID. Those responses come from years and years and years of conditioning. And so... You know, like when there was a fire in Fort McMurray, my husband was up in Fort McMurray. Uh, I knew exactly what he would do because when push comes to shove, he goes into the fire. That's his type of thinking where so many people would just go down the highway to make sure and get away from it as much as, as they could. And so it really is understanding what happens to you when push comes to shove. So we've had something. Um, what did you do? And it's not right or wrong. So hear me when I say that. It's not right or wrong. It is about understanding where you come from and understanding that the person in front of you is acting not from the COVID response, but from a response that's been conditioned to him or her for quite a long time. And so it really is about having that compassion and really understanding. And that is the first part of coaching is having that compassion and understanding. So we're just going to flip to the next one. Um, a coach's journey begins with you. And I don't mean you as my company name. That's not what it means. But it does, when you are a coach, Vera, you said it very, very well. Um, I have a coach. I work with a coach every year for three months of the year. And I am a coach because... When a coach needs to be, we're going to go through this a little bit later, is being coachable, being able to um, really take myself out of the picture and not to take myself so seriously. So that coach's journey doesn't end and start. It, it starts and then it never ends. You're always looking and always improving, always um, seeing something different. You're always going to have different clients. Um, when we went through COVID, my business, I have a, a physical presence business in Coquitlam. The school went completely online and my sessions went online as well. And I work at a, a wellness clinic, New Leaf Wellness Clinic in Abbotsford. And it's a very large uh, integrative clinic. And everything went online and everybody was kind of like, I don't know what to do with that. But the coaching, coaching you can do online very, very easily. So it became the stream of income that I never even miss. I never missed it. I never even skipped beat. So that was what was made it very interesting. So why adding coaching to your business will triple your income and your impact? So coaches are in more in demand now than they have ever been. And all of you, it sounded like everyone has had a coach, you know, whether it was for sports or whether it was for a life coach or a business coach. Um, when you are, when you add coaching, you have a whole new set of eyes, a different set of eyes that supports you to, you know, see things from a different perspective. And when you can see things from a different perspective, it's like, okay, the light kind of goes on and it tweaks. Uh, another question, I'll be asking questions throughout this whole process. You know, have you ever felt like you were stuck or um, you had a question or, or you just couldn't get past a, a certain situation for whatever reason? Coaches have a couple things. One, they provide different ideas, which of course may support you. 
but they're also a sounding board. Uh, most vice presidents, and I deal with a lot of them, and presidents of companies, they don't have anybody to talk to. Who do they talk to? They can't talk to their VPs. They can't talk to their, their staff because, especially in corporate world, it becomes a problem. It can be competition. It can be, you know, lots of different things can happen in that scenario. So a business coach, a personal coach becomes a very valuable ally. And when you think about it being an ally, that becomes a very powerful position for you to be in. The other thing about coaching is that nobody can regulate it. It's not regulated. So right now, you know, our, our wonderful legislation is trying to regulate all kinds of things. And coaching is one of those businesses that it's pretty hard to regulate. And that has good points and bad points. So if it's not regulated and somebody doesn't have any training in coaching, then of course that can be, you know, an issue for, you know, the Better Business Bureau for Kevin. Or um, if they come from a reputable um coaching component and they've, they do have references and lots of people that they've worked with, then that becomes a very good ally for you, which is something you want to pay attention to when you are looking for a coach. I started coaching, interestingly enough, when I was a sponsor in AA. So I dealt with alcoholics and, and I'm going to tell you that was some of the best coaching experience at that point. Um, that I had had. I had taken education on coaching, but that particular type of training allowed me to see things that a lot of people don't see. And then I went into the personal development industry and I coached uh, probably 1,500 people in the personal development industry. And so in that process, I was able to see yet another um, whole different uh, avenue of how people can set goals and how to set goals and how to achieve them in a way that was number one ethical uh, number two was repeatable because that was the thing that was always a problem is that anybody can do anything for 90 days and so you know you're going to lose weight or you're going to you know i had people make five hundred thousand dollars in sales because they'd never done that before in 90 days or um you know, lots of different things. One, one said, I'll never even go on a date, let alone get married. And I was invited to his wedding seven months later. So we wanted to make sure that things were able to be duplicatable so that you did this once and then you could do it again and again and again and again, because you didn't want change happens at such a subconscious level, not a conscious level. Your conscious mind is one thing at a time. Your subconscious mind is 750,000 things at one time. So when you think about that, it's like, where is the power? It's that subconscious part. And if we're just keeping to the conscious part and we're just going to think about it, um, nothing is ever going to change. So change is created at that subconscious level. It's not always, it's not created at the conscious level. You can do anything for 90 days, willpower for 90 days and power through it. This type of coaching isn't like that. That's not the type of coaching I was looking for. I had already done a lot of people, uh, coached a lot of people in that process. That wasn't something that was interesting to me. I wanted it to be a forever thing. So that became the search. I mean, hypnotherapy is an amazing, amazing modality. We're not going to talk a lot about that today, but we will talk that in the program that we offer in the coaching program, I do teach you the basics of hypnosis. And the reason is, is you're hypnotized. Everybody's hypnotized two to three times a day anyway. And so now it's about how do we put that power back to you? And so how do you understand that? And how do you understand that part of the mind that says, okay, so I like that or I don't like that. So do we have some questions I'm noticing that uh, we have we have one question from okay. Uh, okay. how how do we spot the right coach who can provide the right guidance not based on the jobs they have had in the past but results they have discovered delivered to their clients are there well, any set of questions you would recommend 
So the set of questions I would ask, I would actually ask to speak to some of their clients um, that they've had before. When I'm, I'm, when I'm looking for a coach, uh, I want to know what they've done in their personal life, first of all, and their, in their business life, because usually I'm hiring a business coach. So I want to know what they've done in their business life. Um, I, you know, it's really entertaining to me when I, when I, and it's a judgment and, and I shouldn't have that. And I, I, I won't have that. Um, it really is when it comes to business, how long have they been in business for as a coach? That is something that's really important. How long have they been in business? Are they the expert in their field? And you know, what is the impact that they've had with people uh, that have been in their organization? That's always the thing that I'm going to ask. And then also you're going to, we're going to talk a lot about what is it that they, how they hold themselves, how they, does that resonate with you? Do they offer a, you know, a half hour discovery call or, or consultation to see if you are a fit because not everybody's personalities match. Um, there was one coach, uh, different coaches I've had. It wasn't a, it wasn't a fit. And so, yes, the credentials need to be there, but then the fit needs to be there as well. And also, if you're in business, they should be in business, I think. Somebody else has another question? All right, it's not a question. It's more a statement that invites your comment from Linda. I have done some training in hypnosis, but so lack confidence to do it with people. Ah. I don't want to mess somebody up. It's, yeah, it's pretty hard to mess somebody up in hypnosis. So just to give you a bit of a background in the hypnosis part, there's four levels of hypnosis. The first level is when you are in on, watching TV and you zone out. So that's level one. So people are going into that level one in and out all the time, all night, wanting to go to Dairy Queen at eight o'clock at night. Um, the next one is when you drive somewhere and you just pass a tree or the store and you go, where did that... How did I get here? I don't even know. I just kind of zone out when I'm driving. That's level two. And then level three is where what we call synambulism. And that is where we're going to actually do the therapy where we're going to find out, you know, why you, do, why you procrastinate or, or why you um, doubt yourself. You know, the biggest one I ever deal with in hypnosis and coaching is I'm not good enough everybody has that little thought process in the back of their mind that says, I'm not, or most people do, I'm not good enough. Okay. And, and it may not be there for, it may be there for a second or maybe there for five days. Um, well, that's where we find that information out. And then the fourth level, which we never go to, um, unless you're in the hospital is where we can actually put you into hypnosis where you can't move your body and they can amputate your leg. And so that's a pretty powerful thing. That's how powerful your mind is. Uh, we haven't, remember when we were kids, when I was a kid, they used to say we use 5% of our brain. Yeah, they were right. We're using a lot more of it now uh, because we're able to, you know, kind of connect at that, at that subconscious level. And we know a lot more about the mind due to hypnosis and NLP um, over the last 30 years, that, that research has been done uh, pretty hard for you to mess somebody up in hypnosis if your intention is to support them. No further questions. Awesome. Okay. So the U Academy coaching program, how it works, you set a goal that makes sense. You add your expertise, your drive, our system, you get your goal. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how that actually works because this program loosely comes from Harvard. And the reason it does is because, like I said earlier, I really was looking for a program that would actually support uh, change, not just for a 90 day stint, but for a lifetime. That to me was much more valuable than doing it just for a bit, a, a bit of a time. So I added coaching in 2007, I created your own uniqueness. Um, I went out on my own from the personal development industry. Um, my last weekend and in the personal development industry, I had created a class of 
I think there was 98 people that had paid, you know, $675 to do this personal development class of which I think there was like $450,000 of revenue in the last uh, weekend of that class. And so I understand coaching. I understand how to, that making money is really, really important. Um, a lot of coaches have an issue with sale, the sales end of it. And then they wonder why, you know, they, they got to eat. And so then they do other things apart from coaching. So it really, all of our programs have integrated sales in it and the power of your subconscious mind, because we don't make decisions from a position of, uh, I need this. We make a decision based on the premise of, I want to do this. And so we did this in 2007. We have been going strong. I did a hundred K right out of the gate out of my very first year um, coaching and doing seminars and, and really just supporting people, empowering people to really understand their own uniqueness because every one of us is unique. And if we do what we love to do, we can never go wrong with that. Like never. And if, if you're not doing what you love to do, then maybe there's a way to integrate. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Uh, the coaching and doing what you love and doing what you do now so that you have the money, then you get to coach and you do what you love all the same thing. So it becomes very um, interesting as we go through this process. So, you know, you take a look at this gentleman, he's, you know, looking out at this beautiful landscape. Um, the first step to being a great coach is deciding that you want to be a great coach. You know, a lot of people, they don't even decide, they kind of get land in it. And so how do you become a great coach? So we're going to give you three different things that I'd like and some, and some information to take home for you to really take a look at and to kind of do some journaling about this too, because, you know, I, I wish I had done this when I'd started in the whole coaching part, because, and it, it may seem very simplistic. However, you, well, I'll, we'll talk about that as we go along. So become the coach you would want to coach. So it's like becoming the person that you would want to be around. Become the coach that you want to coach. And what I mean by that is you will attract who you are. Learn how to become the coach that you would want to coach. So what I mean by that is if you are a person who is... Um, uh, smart, then you will probably attract people who are smart. If you are a person who's very loving, then you will probably attract people who are very loving. If you are a plumber, you will probably attract people who are a plumber. And so when you want to become a coach, you want to take a look at how you want to be coached. How do you, what do you want to create? What is the legacy that you want to leave? And so when you're looking at potential clients, it really is, can I really support this person to become the person that they really want to be? And it is a question that you will ask yourself on several occasions, but most importantly, you will attract who you are. So if you are a person who speeds all the time, please know that you'll probably attract people that speed all the time too. It's just how that works. We attract who we are. Start by having a beginner's mind. You know, there are three or four words that are incredibly um, very dismissive in the coach's world. The first one is but. So when you say but to a coach, what you're doing is that's negating everything that you said. So this is an interesting comment, which I hear in relationship coaching. I love you, but your feet are too big. Well, all that you've just heard is that your feet are too big and the whole thing of the but negated the I love you. So I want to be successful, but I don't have any clients. So all we just said is I don't have any clients and the subconscious mind will literally respond to I don't have any clients. So start by having a beginner's mind. 
start from the beginning. Take a look at your career that you've had up until now. And just take a look at all of the things that you have been able to achieve because that's really, really important. It's such a valuable tool. And when you start, sometimes we, we, we don't acknowledge what we've done, but we also think we know things and that two words I know comes out of our mind, out of our mouth. And so that I know process, yeah, it blocks all learning. You're not going to learn anything new because you already know it. And you will attract that client as well. It's so interesting. When, when I hear a client say, I know, or a student say, I know, I know that they're going to get a client that says, I know that. And when you know that, what learning is going to happen? None. Uh, the other word is try, as we know, when, when the wonderful Star Wars um, there is no try, there is only do. And so when you think about the try word, it's an excuse for failure. Some people will say that we're just going to attempt, that's fine, but when, and I just said that, so the but word, so the try really is about you're either doing it or you're not. And the other one is can't, and you were right, you can't. As soon as somebody says that. So when you take a look at those four words, Watch how often you say those words, but try, can't, and I know. And just notice that language coming out of, you know, in your conversations. It'll be interesting to see. The next thing is take a step. Take one small step in the direction to becoming a great coach and become coachable. It's so important to have a coach. That's such an important thing. Uh, if you want to be a good coach, you need to have a coach. There will be times when you're dealing either with personal or business that there will be situations that you don't know anything about. And, and you really do need to have that person that you can kind of just um, bounce ideas off of. And that would be the person that you call coach. There's another question or comment. Uh, yes, uh, qu another question from Himant. Uh, what would you recommend new coaches do or innovate to hit the income goals consistently as the coaching business can be quite challenging unless you have a continuous stream of clients? Yeah, can I answer that in a little bit? Yes. Okay, I would like to, because we're going to talk about that in a, in a little bit, because the marketing of coaching is a really important, uh, important piece. And there is one step that starts before you do any marketing. So we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute, I promise. Um, practice one, before to go to bed, state this affirmation. So if you want to become a coach, if you are in business, if you are um, doing business of any kind and you are in the service industry, and if you are an entrepreneur, you are in the service industry. So this is what I was talking about. It came up sooner. Please send to me the people I can be of service to. That affirmation, when you say it, after you take three deep breaths and say that before you go to bed, that has been what what fills my classes that supports my coaching program every single time. So before going to bed, state this affirmation, please send to me the people I can be of service to. Now in the coaching industry, it's a purely service industry. And so there's lots of good coaches and there's lots of great coaches and there's lots of coaches that are new and there's lots of coaches that, are just in it for the money too. So there is that kind of process. This whole service is when you have a client, the client does two things. One, they pay you. So they're not a client if they don't pay you something. The other thing they do is they refer you. That's how, the, that's how we define, how I define a client. And so when I'm saying, please send to me the people that I can be of service to, that is a client that is one, going to pay me, and number two, is going to refer me. 
a very, very important. Um, and also, and who am I saying this to? I'm just saying it to the universe. I just saying it to whatever. I just say this before I go to sleep. Please send to me the people I can be of service to. I don't want to be, I don't want to have the people that I can't be of service to. There's no point. There's no point in that. I, I can't really do anything with somebody who doesn't want my help, right? Or doesn't want to be supported. Corrine. Yes. Why do affirmations work? Uh, they only work if you actually relax. So affirmations. So before you go to bed, um, taking three deep breaths, that puts you in a relaxed state. It actually puts you into between level two and level three of that state of hypnosis or state of relaxation. And then you say, please send to me the people I can be of service to. It puts that into the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind will actually get to work on that during sleep. And so sleep is when your brain lights up. Sleep is when you go to REM and you let go of all the things that have happened during that day. And that's a creative part. Um, more work is done personal development wise on you during your sleep than uh, is done um, while you're awake. If they put on those, the electromagnetic field on, onto your brain, uh, not much lights up when you're awake. It's all done when you're sleeping. Is there another question? No? No, no more questions. Did that answer your question, Roger? Thank you, yes. So affirmations work only when they you put yourself in a relaxed state. They do not work if you do not. Uh, coaching your, uh, do it, oh, sorry, that went fast. Do what you love. Coaching your clients provides an income, but allows you to continually do what you love. So you'll notice these pictures that have you, you've been seeing, and that is what I love. So I go out every year, and I, these are some of the Southern residents in Vancouver. Um, you'll see some humpbacks and some eagles. I've taken all of these photos. There's not any Photoshop. I just picked a bunch of random ones because I have about 20,000 of them since 2009. So how we talked about do what you love and how do you incorporate what you love with what you already do. And it really is just being innovative and being able to do what you love and uh, coaching and your expertise at the same time, integrating all of them that allows you to have an income that, that you really want. Practice number two. So this was taken in Mazatlan. That's a beautiful humpback whale. Write down what you love to do when you were a teenager. So just write down one or two things that you love to do when you were younger. I worked for a newspaper when I was 14. I learned the uh, camera and learned the dark room by the time I was 15. So I was taking pictures when most people were working at the movie theater. What do you still love to do? And what are you the expert in? And we are all expert in something. There is not anybody that is not an expert in something that is on this call. So what are you the expert in? What do you love to do? And what did you want to do when you were a teenager? Sorry. Corrine, why yes. is the question about the teenager relevant? Well, because a lot of times when we're teenagers, we're like exploring different things. And so it is sometimes we, life happens when we're no longer a teenager and we kind of let go of those things that we wanted to do when we were a teenager. That's all. Does that answer your question? Thank you, yes. All right. If you coach people because you are the expert in what you do and you are of service, money will always be there. 
Stop living your life just for the money. So I know that's kind of that thing of that hope kind of thing. You know, like, okay, we can't have that. It's just about hope. We're going to hope we're going to do well. Uh, I don't mean that. But I, and I do mean if you live your life just for the money, that's kind of like the corporate structure that you probably left. And the reason why you're an entrepreneur, because you are, are, are not okay with that, you know, corporate structure that limits what you have the ability to do. So if you coach people because you are the expert, so become the expert. And how you know that you're in the expert, LinkedIn is a big, big thing for coaches. And how do you stand out as the expert? You do what you love to do and you, you're of service. So, so often you go to networking meetings. I've gone to networking meetings. And what happens is uh, people come up to you. Hi, my name is Susie and I am a coach. I coach people. I charge $150 a session and I help people just uh, make a huge difference in their life. Well, um, you're not even in relationship with that person at that point. And so that becomes a bit of a, a concern. That service is really about servicing her as opposed to bringing that client and that relationship to a level where you can actually support each other. And a coaching relationship is all about supporting each other. People right now are looking for good coaches, people who want to support who really do want to support that person that's in front of them. Um, I see it every day. I have calls every day. I uh, probably do, you know, 20 to 30 sessions a week. And I am constantly sending out referrals to other people because I can't handle everything that's going on. People are looking for that support. Coaching in your industry People are looking for that. They're looking for people who can support them to do whatever it is that you're doing. And if you're true to that, you'll find those people. And without that whole hope thing, is coaching hard work? Yeah, it is. It, it is hard work. I'm not going to say this is an easy um, industry. However, if you are the expert and you keep going, it will pay off very, very well because you will always have people asking you. And if your job is to be of service, you will always have people asking questions. If money was, okay, here's practice number three. Question number three, if money was not an object, what would you be doing with your life? And lots of people ask this question. Um, and I'd like you to really take a moment and just jot down if money wasn't an object, what you, would you be doing? Would you be traveling the world? Would you, would you be doing what you're doing? Do you love what you do? Journal about what you would do if money was not an object or was not the object of why you do what you do. All right, so we'll have these slides available, of course. Um, let's talk, a, we're gonna talk a little bit about the actual stats behind coaching. So are you ready to get the results that you want? 67.6% .6 higher level of self-awareness for people who are coached. 62.4% smarter goal setting with a coach. 60.5% more balanced life. 52 point or 57.1% lower stress levels, 52.9 in self-discovery, 52.4% more self-confidence, 43.3 improvement in the quality of life, 39.5 enhanced communication skills and 35.7 project completion. So when somebody uses a coach, these are the typical stats that people will get when they use an actual coach. So if these are the things that you're looking for, stopping procrastination, doubting, second guessing, stop being broke, stop buying your story, 
a coach can definitely support with this and so much more. But these are the ones that normally come up when somebody's calling me and they're looking for business coaching. These are kind of the, the things that are stopping the typical entrepreneur. Procrastination is a big one. Um, the second guessing and doubting is another one that's quite large actually. So let's take a look at how the program actually works. We're going to run through it really quick. So just think about a behavior that you do that runs contrary to a goal of trusting, accepting, or loving yourself. So if you were to set a goal with me, the goal would be, it would sound like one of three things. And the reason we use these three things is because if you did all of these things or one of these things better, your personal and your professional life would change. I'm committed to trusting myself, I'm committed to accepting myself, or I'm committed to loving myself. So when somebody works with me as a coach, they're going to, there's a set of criteria that comes to, that we come to an agreement that this is what you're going to do. I'm gonna be committed to trusting myself, I'm committed to accepting myself, or I'm committed to loving myself. So what's the word that resonates with you right now? I'm committed. I need to look on trusting myself a little bit more. Okay. So I'm committed to trusting myself. What's, what are those, some of those things that I do? What behavior do I do that runs contrary to that goal? So for example, normally I would have somebody to help me with. So I'll just go through a couple of the last ones when I've done this. I'm committed to trusting myself and what they do is they doubt themselves or they second guess themselves or they sabotage themselves. Most of us have done that at one point or another in our career. So changing the behavior doesn't work long term, right? So let's talk about what actually changes it. When you say, for example, we'll say doubting yourself, it creates a worry. And the reason that you doubt yourself is because you're worried that you're going to fail or you're worried that you're going to be rejected. Those are two very common things. And so that worry creates a whole energy of its own. And when you do that, it actually creates like what we call a hidden, um, it's in a subconscious component where it's kind of hidden in the subconscious mind, which creates an assumption. So this assumption is say, for example, uh, what I assume is if you doubt yourself because you're worried you're going to fail, the assumption that you have in the subconscious mind is I assume I'm going to fail. And it's like it's in the back of your head and you are simply like you go into a meeting with that. You go into, we'll just skip this one because I was... What you assume runs in the background all the time. So that assumption that you're going to fail or that assumption that you're going to get rejected is running in the background all the time. And so you go into a meeting and that is running. So even if it goes well, it's still running in the back of your mind. And when you're done, I don't know for you, but I know for me, like I'll do a great presentation and then I'll think, Oh, well, maybe I should have done that better or that better or that better. And, and then we have this little critique of ourselves. That's from that assumption that it, I really am going to fail. It's like it wants to make it that part of you that makes it true. So it's there in your meeting, your sales call, and in your home. In our personal and business coaching program, you'll learn first how to support yourself and then how to support others. Because in this process, every one of us has assumptions or different things that are running that really don't support ourselves, let alone when we're trying to support someone else. You'll learn relaxation techniques that support you to change for good. So we will actually do work on that assumption. We're not going to change your behavior. So if your behavior is you eat food at 10 o'clock at night and you want to lose 40 pounds, uh, we're not going to get you to change that behavior. The reason that you eat at 10 o'clock is because you're worried that there's not enough food, maybe. We'll just use that as an example. And that you assume there's not going to be enough food. So we wouldn't work on the eating part. We would work on the assumption 
that there's not enough food. And the worry about failing and you assume you're going to fail, that's what we're going to work on as, it, for, as a coach. I would work on the assumption that you believe that you're going to fail. I'm not going to work on the behavior. The behavior that you have, the eating at 10 o'clock or the procrastination is what you use to protect yourself. That is your like your comfort blanket. And for me to take that away as a coach, which many coaching programs actually do that, they say, okay, I don't want you to procrastinate for the next five minutes. All right, well, what's that going to change? Nothing. As soon as something else happens, you're going to go back to procrastinating. So we can't work on that part. That's like taking your jacket off in minus 40 degree weather. That doesn't work. And so we need to work on that assumption that you're going to fail. So we're going to give you three, four different small things that you're going to do that's going to strengthen that failure so that it's so that, that assumption that you're going to fail, it's going to weaken it. So every time we do something that says, no, I don't assume I'm going to fail, I'm going to just simply be okay with um, I can be successful. And that's how this program works. I'm going to, you'll learn how to create permanent change that supports both your personal and professional life. It needs to be both personal and professional. You'll use the experience that you already have to support your niche because your niche, you're the one who knows about that. We're just going to implement a program that supports you to support your niche. It's very easily done. Um, this gentleman, uh, just to give you a few, a test, few testimonials because we're running out of time. James Whelan, the coaching framework that was used by us during the course was deceptively powerful. Selecting from three goals, which themselves seem very different than anything I would have suspected. The process took me through some really simple steps to identify key steps in order to achieve the original goal. The process itself wasn't just simple. It was shockingly powerful in that it very, very clearly identifies to the participant, by the participant, by the participant, how their own behaviors and assumptions actually keep them circling at a thousand feet as opposed to soaring the tops of the mountains and beyond. I successfully implemented the steps in the coaching sheet to arrive at a space in which I felt completely different about myself at a profound and elementary level. I can't re recommend Kareem's coaching framework enough. Uh, we have some more questions. Yes. No, there's no more question. Okay. okay, that's great. No comments. Okie dokie. Um, we'll just go past these ones. Uh, a coach's journey is all about being accountable, uh, learning how to utilize relaxation techniques, being coachable, learning how to take your personal and professional level to the per, professional to the next level. Learning how to balance success with philanthropy and making more money coaching clients in your niche. And we talked about, somebody talked about leadership. I think, Kevin, that was you that was talking about leadership. Uh, a coach is a very powerful leader. Um, and leaders today, when we take a look at leadership, that accountability is something that's really important. Um, utilizing, being able to be relaxed and being in that, in being okay, being in your own skin is really, really important. Um, leadership today, it's very skewed all over the map, but the accountability is really important. And so whatever it is that you want to do, that accountability is going to be very, very clear. So when somebody asks about well, how do you hire a coach, um, a coach isn't somebody who tells you what you want to hear. A coach is someone who observes rather than judges and really supports you to be your best self. That's really what a coach's job is to do. But in order for them to even see that, they need to be their best self. And that's a really important, important piece. They need to be working on things continuously in their life to help you move forward. I remember... I was coaching this gentleman one time and his, he was an engineer. He wanted to create uh, $50,000 over and above his income in 90 days. So not using his engineering money, not anything. And it was day and we had 90 days to do it. And so day 49, he had, he had um, 
created $13.41. And he collected pop bottles because I said, okay, write down a hundred ways of creating $50,000 in, in 90 days, not using your, and so pop bottle collecting was one of those processes. And so for me, it, my coach said to me, he said, okay, so if you want to help your client, what you need to do is get out of your own way as well. And that is entrepreneurs. We do that all the time. So I needed to, so I said, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to simply come up with an idea. I'm going to execute it. And I'm going to see how fast it's going to take for me to create $6,000. He needed $50,000. I was going to create, see how fast it was going to take for me to create $6,000. So I woke up the next morning and I really, and again, I had said, please send to me the people I can be of service to, number one, and please send me an idea that will help me to create $6,000. And my subconscious mind went to work. I woke up the next morning, I come up with this advertising thing. I knew a lot about websites at the time and I created this whole thing. I sent out an email, I started talking to people and by one o'clock I had $6,000 in my bank account. It took him eight more days after that to create uh, 49,900 and something and 59 cents in order to get his $50,000. And then he went to exceed it and hit $62,000. So a good coach gets themselves out of the way. A good leader gets themselves out of the way and allows that their person to do really well. That's really, really important in the coach's journey, in a coach's process. Karina, a question from Kevin. Yes, can you, yes. Can you recommend any good resources for leaders who want to learn how to be better coaches for their staff and team? Uh, yes, actually for you, a really good resource would be um, the book from Harvard, uh, Immunity to Change. That is an amazing book on leadership and on how to really support uh, your clients. Can you say that book title again? Yes, it's Immunity to Change. Immunity to Change? Yes, Immunity to Change. I'll just get you the person who wrote it two seconds. It was done by two doctors, professors from, oops. Uh, yeah, if you just put, it's Dr. Uh, Robert Keegan and Lisa Lahi. Thank you. Welcome. All right. So the coaching program invests. So we have VBN online special. We got a couple minutes. So I'm just going to tell you what it is for the online special. All you need to do. It's a half hour discovery call. It's free. It's a really to figure out you know, how this type of coaching may be able to help you and for me to explain what it is that we have available to you. So, so that's as open to everybody. Um, just contact me, Corrine at uh, useminars.com. And so the coaching program, like I said, I've spent a lot of years trying to find a coaching program that actually worked. And that actually supported for continual change and for that development as well. So when we add the subconscious part to it, it makes it really easy. So we have a bunch more people that have asked some questions or comments or... No, there's no more questions, but okay. I will go back to Iman's question about yes. uh, a direct guidance you can offer to help new coaches uh, generate oh. early revenue. So for early coaches, um, what I did was I, uh, first of all, I had my warm list. So my email list I used and I sent out a special. So I would, um, had six sessions for like $300. So I would do six sessions. Really, there are $50 a session. They got six sessions. It's very inexpensive and it's really an easy sell. Really, that's how I started. And I had like 12 people within a week sign up and paid me $300. That's pretty good money for a first time coach. Um, then I would help them and I would work with them and then I would help them become successful. So then they would give me referrals and then it just blossomed from there. 
Networking events is really important. It's a little bit of an interesting thing because there's so many life coaches right now. Uh, don't call yourself a life coach. Call yourself um, something else. So a spiritual coach, a technical coach, uh, whatever. And using your own niche, making sure that you provide that value that they will actually, your client will actually get that value from um, working with you because there has to be a result that matters. That end result always matters. Does that answer your question? I mean, I did networking. I did um, my warm market. I uh, went to Kelowna and I didn't know anybody and I just started talking to people and I got four clients out of one little um, session. Um, right now, COVID, you know, how to support uh, how to navigate COVID um, and staying sane in COVID. Lots of coaches are using that and that's actually really working quite well. A lot of people are quite scared over COVID. So it, it, not to exploit COVID, but really it's a great opportunity to support people to just simply relax. Thank you. All right, so the VBN special, uh, it's a $49 special. It's a one full session of coaching, um, a recording that actually helps you to begin to relax and begin to like, really focus in on that creative side. Um, I normally charge $150 uh, for coaching. So for VBN, we're doing it at $49. That's good until July 10th, so till Friday. Is that good, Roger? Can I do it like that or do I need to do it for longer? You tell me. Uh, no, that's fine. Okay. Uh, the coaching program, we have a new one starting in September. Um, this particular uh, coaching program starts with one-on-one -on -one coaching. And what you get is you get 12 online business and personal coaching sessions once a week. Uh, relaxation recordings to support your own development. In the online business and personal coaching, we deal with not only the worksheet, which takes about three weeks for you to really understand it, but then we actually teach you how to read people. We actually teach you how to relax, how to know what your body is doing, how to really you know, connect to that part of you. The body is a pendulum. It really does tell everyone what, what you're doing. Um, I know people have said yes or no, but it really does. It really does. You can't lie with the body. The body doesn't ever lie. Um, the secret shortcut to eliminating the blocks, any blocks that you have, uh, plus four online sessions to learn how to do all of this with your clients. So everything that we're doing right down to even a, a very light hypnosis, you're actually going to learn how to do that um, working with me for four months. The most change happens, just in case you're wondering, for anybody who wants to be a coach, the most change happens between three and a half and four months. That is where people will see the most significant change in any, with any type of coaching. Um, I'm just going to say the whole hypnosis thing does make everything go a lot faster, um, just because you're actually doing change in a relaxed state. We're changing things from, uh, from a subconscious level. And yeah, I'm done. That's it. So if you're interested in the coaching program, if you're interested in learning more about coaching and learning more about how um, even the marketing part, I'd, I'd love to sit down and chat with you. If I, I'll give you my phone number. Um, yeah, the VBN special is $525 per month for four months. Normally what that coaching program would cost is four thousand dollars. It starts um, whenever you want to start, and it starts at five twenty-five per month for four months. Uh, celebrating your own uniqueness—that's what U stands for. YOU stands for unique. Your own uniqueness. If you want to get a hold of me, um, the other thing about being a really good coach is being transparent and being able to be approachable and being able to get a hold of you. So many coaches, you can't get a hold of them. Oh, well, you just call my assistant or you call this. I'm really against kind of that. So Corinne at youseminars.com is my email. And that is actually my cell number. 